I'm going to show you how to fix urinary frequency once and for all. Out of all the conditions that are out there, this one is a pain in the butt because it interrupts your sleep. And here you are just trying to rest and you're getting up two, three, four times a night. When I was in practice, there was a guy that came in and he was getting up, I'm not kidding, 10 times a night. Now I'm going to show you how easy it is to get rid of this condition. All you have to do is understand the mechanism. Now, urination at night is called nocturia, and it happens equally in men and women. And urinary frequency is not a problem with the bladder. That's the tip of the iceberg. That is a symptom. There's something else going on. And when you understand it, you can get rid of it. And it's not going to be taking any pills. It's just a shift in what you eat. It's a dietary problem. But the main unnecessary problem with this condition is that it leads to fatigue the next day and blood sugar problems. You're gonna be craving carbs the next day because a lack of sleep will alter your blood sugars. And it affects cortisol, which affects your mood, so you're grouchy and irritable, and it can even affect your cognitive function, your ability to concentrate and your memory. Now, if you actually do research on this topic, you're gonna to find that uh, they're gonna talk about, it could be a UTI, it could be an enlarged prostate, it could be a kidney stone, it's usually because you're drinking too much water, and all of these could be a factor, but there's something else that's way more common. Now, if you're a man, uh, you've probably been told that your prostate is enlarged. So that's what's causing your problem getting up at night. But here's the thing. When you actually treat in a large prostate, um, this symptom rarely goes away. So the treatment of the prostate doesn't fix the nocteria. And another question that comes up is, uh, you know, you're told that uh, you have too much testosterone, a certain type of testosterone, and that's why your prostate is enlarged. But then why is it that testosterone decreases with age and prostate enlargement increases with age? So there's all these confusions that come up, but here's what we know for sure. Diabetics nearly always have problems with urinary frequency. What's the difference between a diabetic and someone who doesn't have diabetes? High levels of sugar, and many times high levels of insulin, unless they are a diabetic type one. Here's the next clue. In a study related to dogs, and I'm gonna put these studies down below, it was found that when you administer insulin to these dogs, you have a significant output of urine. These dogs start dumping lots of urine. Here's another clue. Insulin inhibits the adrenal hormones that are supposed to hold urine. So the adrenals have a lot of different hormones and one of the hormones is supposed to retain fluid. Well, insulin blocks that hormone. So guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna release a lot of urine. And the last clue is this, high levels of insulin are nearly always found in overactive bladder syndrome. Now, what is one thing that doctors never ever test? Insulin, they check your blood sugars, but they never do a fasting insulin test. High levels of insulin nearly always come before prediabetes. High levels of insulin are also associated with insulin resistance. And many people, both men and women, who have urination frequency at night also have metabolic syndrome. They might have high blood pressure, they might have an enlarged gut, they might have blood sugar issues, they might have discoloration in the lower part of the leg, like these different spots. They might have edema or swelling in the lower extremities. They tend to get tired after they eat lunch, they have to take a nap, and they can't go for a long period of time without needing to eat. So the most likely situation that's causing your urinary frequency is high levels of insulin. So the next question is, hmm, what causes high insulin before bed? And the answer is snacking. Snacking at nighttime is the number one reason for high levels of insulin throughout the night. Snacking increases insulin. Eating increases insulin. And so does high carbs. I mean, a lot of people know that it's the carbohydrate and sugar that increases insulin, but they don't connect the dot between the eating so even if someone is consuming a low carb snack, you're still raising insulin. So this is what you need to do. It's very, very simple. It's not complicated. It's gonna produce some quick changes. It might take a couple of days to work, but it will work. Number one, 
stop snacking at night. Take the snack that you would normally eat at night and push it to your dinner. And don't eat anything after 6.30 p.m. And don't drink anything past 6.30 p.m. Just make sure you drink enough food flu to the day, but don't drink at night. Because the combination of high insulin and that extra water that you drink before you go to bed will definitely keep you up all night long. All right, so if you just do that, you're gonna see some really amazing changes. But the other two things you need to do is start cutting your carbs down to less than 30 grams per day. That is called the ketogenic diet. That's gonna really help you so you can sleep to the entire night and not get up at all. And when you're doing the low carb diet, you also want to add intermittent fasting to that. If you're new to my channel and you would like more information on that, I created a very short playlist with three very simple and short videos. I put it right here. Check it out.